this is still a really good book to have because the techniques that uh, Gary Belly talks about in here certainly apply to old bikes. I mean, the book was written when the bikes were new, but for a vintage racer, there's still a lot of good stuff in here. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Vintage Motocross q and I'm your host, Joe Abadi. Thank you for joining me. Chelsea, Jordan, Susie, thank you for helping me put the show together tonight. Let's get down to the starting line, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what's coming up on the show. The starting line is, of course, sponsored by Motion Pro. For your tools, cables, and controls, visit Motion Pro online. On tonight's show, in the next time try this segment, we'll be taking a look at how to remove air bubbles from underneath the graphics when you're applying them on a plastic tank. Got a great little video on this. In the Moto Showcase, a 1973 Kawasaki F11 250 sent in by Matt Erdos. Great looking bike. I'll tell you a bit more about it in a little while. Here's the problem. A lot of people have asked over the years, what do you do when one of those inserts spin around in a plastic tank? I've got a great tip for you on that tonight. What's it worth? 1987 YZ490 that was refurbished by our friend Bill Masho. We'll be taking a look at that. You'll be able to guess what you think this bike sold for recently on eBay. The expansion chamber, Mark Farrister, will be here. He is the owner of Sunrise Vapor Blasting. We put a nice little video together for you. Looking forward to showing it to you in just a little while. If you're watching the show, please share it, whether you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. A little bit later on, we'll have a random share giveaway winner, compliments of Amsoil. How are the pros watching the show? They're sitting back watching Vintage Motocross Q&A on the big screen TV from YouTube. They're watching it on YouTube, and then they're commenting from their phone. Don't forget to sign up for our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. You'll get a little alert like this. It tells you when we're live. You'll be able to hear all the shows, including all of our interviews from Vintage Motocross Radio and all the past shows from Vintage Motocross Q&A. And as I mentioned, don't forget, watch the show on your big screen TV in HD, sit back, comment from the couch. That's the way the pros are doing it. Vintage Motocross Q&A, what do we need? We need content we like when you send it in. One of our favorite parts of the show, one of the best parts of the show is the Here's the Problem segment. When you send in questions, we get a little time to work on things. We can bring up some good topics each week on the show. Please send them in. It's never the wrong time to send in your questions. Or if you have comments on the show, we welcome them as well. The same thing goes for the Moto Showcase bikes. We've got a couple of weeks in advance right now, but we're getting low again. So please send in your bikes that you'd like us to feature in the Moto Showcase. In turn, we'll get you a nice prize sent out. We've been giving away coffee cups. Sometimes Amsoil products, Preston Petty products, sending your bikes. It doesn't have to be a show bike. It could be a race bike, a mini bike, any bike that's important to you. That applies to vintage motocross. Eight to 10 pictures with a brief description, but make it informative. We'll feature it here on the show. We'd love to have you on. As always, I want to thank all of our sponsors, Vintco Motion Pro. 
Full Circle Racing Preston Petty Products, Racer X, Sunrise Vapor Blasting, Northwest Mako CZ, and of course, Emsoil. In the next time, try this segment tonight, it's brought to you by Vinco. Keep the ride going. Our friend Roy Vanderveer has made a little video for us to talk about how to apply graphics on a plastic tank. See what Roy's got to say. Well, hello, everybody in VMX Q&A land. It's Wednesday, March 10th, and I'm at my favorite home away from home, which is the motocross facility and power sports park in Millville, New Jersey. If any of you guys are in the New England area, I strongly encourage you to come out and ride with us. Uh, like Vinco, we're doing our best to keep the ride going as well. Uh, a topic that I've seen a lot of people talk about and they go about all sorts of ways that I don't think are the best to deal with are bubbles underneath their tank graphics. As the vintage community evolves into bikes that are more like this and sometimes a little less like the uh, aluminum tank versions that we were all loving 20 years ago and then 40 years ago, uh, now we've got faded white gas tanks and we need to do something about it and the best easiest way to fix that is to slap some nice graphics on it like this. I don't use pins, I don't use needles, we don't cut anything, we do not uh, inflict violence upon our graphics to keep them nice and flat on the on the gas tank. So the tools that you need are very simple and of course all of us in the motocross world love simple so you're going to need a block of wood and a lint-free towel. And the way I do this is you just fold the towel in half and find a nice square edge on your block. Hang the towel over that. And then you simply apply pressure and squeeze the air bubbles out from under the graphic. Uh, this is something that I came up with. I can't say that nobody else has done it before me but I've never seen anybody talk about it in graphic land. And if you spend just a few minutes, I mean, it goes quick because you're able to put so much downforce on the graphic. This way you're not working your fingers, trying to get the air bubbles out. And then before too long, you've either got all of them out or you've got almost all of them out. You can go back and forth. You can go in one direction. Um, it kind of doesn't matter. The importance of the lint-free towel is that prevents you from getting little bits of towel stuck in all the little holes on the graphic. It's inexpensive and just that fast. And this graphic was not bubbled up in a big way, but there were enough bubbles under there that I wanted to iron it out. And just that fast, it's laying almost perfectly flat. And man, that is fast and easy, and it doesn't, doesn't hurt, doesn't strain anything. And the other product you could use, because sometimes this will pull up a little bit of glue out of the holes, is you get a, a good shop paper towel and some Goo Gone or a similar product, spray it on the towel, and then you wipe the graphic down. And that way, any adhesive that may have come up either in the holes or around the edge is taken care of fast and easy. I know I've got some shadows working against me, but I hope you can see how much of an improvement that made. So next time, try this. Leave the knives and stuff in the toolbox. You don't need them for that, for this part. So just like Vinco, our friends at Vinco, we're doing our best to keep the ride going. Thanks for coming out and watching VMX Q&A, and we hope to see you at the track. Roy Vanderveer with a great little tip there. And of course, that segment is sponsored by Vitco. Keep the ride going. In the Moto Showcase tonight, Matt Erdos has sent in a beautiful little 1973 Kawasaki F11M. The Moto Showcase is, of course, brought to you by Preston Petty Products. Jordan is going to go through the slides, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Matt's 73 F11. Uh, he purchased his bike at, back in Arizona in 2017. He paid $6,500 for it and had it shipped to Michigan. All the other parts on the bike were correct, except the air box. The top end was bored first over, and an NOS oversized piston and rings were installed. I blasted and repainted the frame and the swing arm, cleaned and repainted the motor and the pipe. I found a set of reproduced black fenders with the embossed K on the front one located from an old school 
bike shop in Australia, and they had it shipped to me. I cleaned the tank and put it on uh, with vintage Kawasaki decals that I bought from Mark Hildebrand from Nightmare Racing. He had the correct vintage die-cut ones I prefer. I managed to find an NOS primary gear cover on eBay, which I couldn't believe at the time, and I was able to modify a 74KX250 airbox to accommodate the large rear fender. I finished the restoration of June, in June of 2018. It was featured in the number 77 issue of VMX magazine. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. I'm still hunting for a stock air box to make this bike completely correct. So if anyone is watching Vintage Motocross Q&A tonight, please contact me, I'd love to buy it. Kawasaki only built 200 of these and many less than that got to dealer sponsored or factory riders, so they are quite rare. The following year was when the first Kawasaki Kawasaki KX became available. I want to thank Matt Erdos for sending in that great Kawasaki F11 and uh, for the nice history on it too. Beautiful job, Matt, and we're going to get you a nice little gift compliments of Preston Petty products. Once again, thank you. Preston Petty products, whether it's number plates, lighting, fenders, plastic grips, whatever it may be. Preston Petty Products is still producing all the stuff we love from back in the 70s. So please visit them online at PrestonPettyProducts.com. Thank you, Paul Standard, for all you do for us here at Vintage Motocross Q&A. And here's the problem segment tonight, which is sponsored by Motion Pro. We'll take a look at some of the questions that you sent in over the past week, and we'll talk about that. Jordan, what do we have up first? Jeff Ward. Nope, not that Jeff Ward. Joe, I was told that spark plugs should be torqued. I don't believe it. What's your take on this? You know, for many years, myself and probably a lot of other people, I bet you 99% of you probably go out there when you change the plug on your bike, you put your new plug in, you tighten it till the old elbow creaks or whatever happens, and you're ready to go. The fact of the matter is I did do a little research on this, and there are torque specs depending on how big the millimeters, how many millimeters your, your spark plug is. Now, all of us on Vintage Bike, we're using spark plugs that have uh, 14, a 14 millimeter width on uh, the diameter of the spark plug. And what I learned is that they should be torqued from 18 to 20 foot pounds. And they suggest that you do this when the bike is either just warm or cold, but not when it's hot. So yeah, whoever told you that spark plug should be torqued is absolutely correct. I bet a lot of us aren't doing it, but it's something to consider next time you change the plug in your bike. Thanks for the question. Ed Skelton. That Ed Skelton, or not that Ed Skelton. Either way, welding something on a car doesn't affect the electrical system. Would it hurt the ignition on a vintage bike? Yes and no. Yes, because it depends on where you're welding and where the ground is. Now, here's my theory on this. It's very easy to get to all the electrical parts on your vintage bike. Simply disconnect the coil, the kill switch, anything that might be plugged in and remove it. And if you need to do some welding on the frame, you can then do that. The most, uh, the, the most cautious thing you can do and the best thing you can do is keep your ground close to where you're gonna weld. It seems from what I've researched and from what I've heard from welders that damage comes from when someone puts the ground very far away from where they're actually welding. So. You need to put that ground as close to where you're going to be welding as possible. But to be on the safe side, I would disconnect anything that's plugged into that electrical system on that bike. I hope that answers the question for you. Alan Webb, can you give us any tips for stripped inserts in plastic tanks? Not the threads, but the entire insert is spinning in the tank. Yeah, I can, Alan. A lot of guys talk about this on the Motorcycle Gas Tank Q&A page, and recently, we had uh, a very good member of the page, always with a lot of information. His name is Hugh F. Page. And I wanna thank you for sending us this uh, little tip. They're called P-Tex sticks. Now, what are P-Tex sticks? They're used in ski shops to clean up the grooves and the gouges in the bottom of skis and snowboards. This stuff turns to liquid and drips very nicely into grooves, into cracks, and just flows right in there. All you do is light it up with a candle or one of those little uh, match things you use that you light up your grill with, and it begins to drip, and it will really work its way down into those little cracks. I saw a video of someone using it on YouTube. It gets exceptionally hard afterwards, and sand, but sands very easily. Now, what you can do, and Hugh said he's done this on a few different tanks. 
you want to look where that insert is and where it may be spinning around there. And you might want to get in there with an exacto knife and clean out around that square where that piece of brass is. Then you're going to take a candle, you're going to light up that P-Tex stick, and you're going to let it drip right down in there and work its way around that brass insert. And it's really going to stick to the brass and it's going to stick to that plastic as well. So next time, try that. I haven't done it. Hugh says he's done it several times and it's worked perfectly for him every time. P-Tex sticks. There's some videos on it on YouTube too. Pretty good tip. We're going to take a commercial break right now. Don't forget to keep sharing the show, whether you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube watching the show, don't forget to comment Amsoil. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Hi, Jeff here, introducing you to Motion Pro's magnetic pickup tool today. Now we've all had that bad experience where we drop a loose part or fastener into a hard to reach place like a skid plate or belly pan. Well, this is the right tool for the job that will retrieve that stubborn part and get you back to working on your ride. As for the features of the magnetic pickup tool, first you have this billet aluminum handle. There's a low profile magnetic tip that's extremely strong and in fact will even pick up a Motion Pro T handle. This flexible shaft can get into hard to reach places and with its protective coating won't damage the finish on your motorcycle. The magnetic pickup tool is affordably priced at $14.99 and is available from your favorite power sports dealer nationwide. So avoid future frustration and pick one up for yourself today. Another great tool from Motion Pro in the What's It Work segment tonight, which is sponsored by Full Circle Racing. We'll be telling you a little bit more about a special from Full Circle in just a moment. But for now, what's it worth? We're going to take a look at a 1987 YZ490 that was recently sold on eBay. And while I'm reading about this, you can take a guess, your best guess in the comments uh, about how much it was sold for. Now, According to the description, this is a well-sorted example and in near new condition. The engine and chassis have been completely refinished. The engine has new bearings and seals. It's been re-sleeved with an LA sleeve. It is on the standard bore with a new piston. The head has the Eric Gore modification that helps starting, helps minimize engine ping. This bike runs well on race gas and good quality fuel is the key to smooth performance according to Eric Gore and the head modification he makes. Carburation and jetting are well sorted. The bike utilizes the Yamaha boost bottle system. The bike has a brand new FMF fatty pipe and a power core silencer. The bike starts well and it runs strong. The rear shock has been revalved by Racetech. The gas tank is new and there's no yellowing on it from any gasoline. The other body work is in very great condition. The front and rear rims are in beautiful shape and they still have a brand new ST1 tire mounted to them. The seat cover is near perfect. The handlebars and controls are in excellent condition. The bike has been started. It's been test ridden. It runs perfectly. This bike was recently sold on eBay by our friend Bill Masho. And uh, what were your guesses on how much this bike sold for? 3,500, The actual price this bike sold for was $5,440. And it looks like a really great looking piece. I know Bill Masho very well, always puts out a quality product in this 87 YZ490. Doesn't look uh, any different than anything else I've ever seen, ever seen come out of Bill's shop. $5,440, 87. YZ490. Full Circle Racing. We were just talking about them a moment ago. The special still continues from Tom McAllister. He will powder coat your hubs, and that includes him bead blasting them, cleaning them, disassembling them. He'll do that, mask them, powder coat them, all for 50 bucks a hub. That comes in either gloss back or a semi black. Now, if you want a special color, he'll do it for just $20 more. It's a one time charge. Also, if you want your brake plates done, it's just a $10 fee. Great deal from Tom McAllister and Full Circle Racing Limited. You can send him your hubs. And of course, he has rims, spokes, nipples. He's a master at lacing and truing. I've got a half a dozen sets of wheels here from Tom McAllister. We'll be using on projects in the very, very near future. So get a hold of Tom and Full Circle Racing. Get yourself back a beautiful set of wheels. And that's good for either vintage bikes, Evo bikes, or modern bikes. Thank you, Tom McAllister, for all you do for us here at Vintage Motocross Q&A. 
So then he's more across Byron Seller's Price Guide page, six years and running, over 16,000 members. If you have a bike you'd like to know the value of, go post it there with about six or eight pictures and a nice description. A lot of people would be happy to help you. So whether you're selling a bike and you're wondering what it's worth before you post it somewhere else, or you have a bike in mind that you're looking to purchase, post it there, Vintage Motocross Buy and Seller's Price Guide page, and you'll get some real, real nice answers to the questions that you'll be asking about the bike. Remember, this is just a group for buying and selling. Uh, I'm sorry, not buying and selling, but just discussing the values. Vintage Motocross, Buyer and Seller's Price Guide page. We'll be having some results coming up there too from the Mika Motorcycle Auction that will be happening at the beginning of May in Las Vegas. The Expansion Chamber tonight, Sunrise Vapor Blasting, one of our sponsors, put a nice video together. Let's take a look at it. Hi, I'm Mark Ferrister and my company is Sunrise Vapor Blasting and today I'm going to show you the benefits of vapor blasting. This is the part we're going to put in the vapor blaster. It's been sitting on a shelf for 20 plus years. It's pretty stained and pretty bad. We'll see what the vapor blasting can do to this. Vapor blasting doesn't change the metal. It just cleans it and restores it back to the original condition. Here's the finished product coming out of the blaster. Carburetor came out perfectly clean, just, just like new. It takes all the stain, old gas stains, and um, anything else that is a problem, removes. And it does a great job. I'm Mark Ferrister, and you can learn more about Sunrise Vapor Blasting by visiting our Facebook page. Mark Farrister and Sunrise Vapor Blasting. Mark, thanks for making the video. We've got some stuff coming your way that we're going to have vapor blasted uh, from some of the projects we're working on here in the shop. And thank you for your support. Sunrise Vapor Blasting, as Mark said, visit them on Facebook. You'll learn more about it. In the product spotlight tonight, which is brought to you by Vinco, keep the ride going. We've got some Honda CR250 engine seals, oil seals for the 73 through 76 CR-250, uh, the MR-250, the 170, I'm sorry, the 76 MT-250. Um, yeah, that's it. Covers all those Covers all those bikes for just $49.95. When rebuilding your Honda CR-250 engine, having new oil seals is a must. And Vinco has a solution. This engine oil seal kit is made with modern materials and manufacturing techniques to ensure as good or a better fit than OEM fitment and performance. It comes with a crank seal shaft. In fact, it comes with two of them, the crank case oil seal, the crank case dust seal, the kickstarter oil seal, the ship shaft oil seal, clutch cap o-ring, and the oil cap o-ring. $49.95 available from Vinco. And if you're rebuilding your engine, this is a great time to get them. Vinco, keep the ride going. Northwest Mako CZ. Boy, I'll tell you, Alan Brown's doing a great job out there in Pennsylvania for Northwest Mako CZ. He's been building new products just about every week. We've been seeing stuff come out. Last week, we had some shift shafts. This week, we've got some Kickstarter shafts for the big clutch four speed, 73 through 75 for the small clutch bikes. Also, the Magnums, the Mega 2s, the Alpha, all 78 through 82s, and of course, the 75 through 77. He's got a special running right now for $109. Usually, they're $129. Tell them that you saw it here at Vintage Motocross q and It's just $109. And you know what? Makos are prone to be going through uh, Kickstarter shafts. We've all been there. If you've owned a Mako, you know what I'm talking about. At $109, I would get one of these even if I didn't need it today. It's a great little piece of insurance to have in your toolbox for $100. Next time you're out at a race, maybe you're at a national a long way from home, or just to prevent a really good day of riding into becoming a real bad day of riding, Spend 109 bucks, get that shift shaft, put it in your, I mean, that Kickstarter shaft, put it in your toolbox, have it on hand. Alan Brown, thanks for all you do for us here. Northwest Mako CZ. Amsoil, the specials just keep on going here at Vintage Motocross Q&A, and I want to thank Russell Waters, Amsoil Special. Everything you see here in this photo, which I have just to the left of me on the set, 
is just forty six ninety nine. It retails for just it retails for seventy five dollars. Now, when you buy it for forty six ninety nine, you're automatically given twenty five percent off of all other M's oil products for the next six months as a preferred customer. All you need to do is PayPal M's oil plus at AOL dot com. Include your name, address, email, and phone number, and Russell Waters will get you out this package. And there's also, yeah, there you see it right there. There's a funnel that comes with this little kit too. It's got some octane boost. It's got firearm lubricant for you guys uh, who have guns and everything else for all your dirt bike and off-road bikes. $46.99 retails for $75. bucks. Amsoil, the first in synthetic oil since 1973. Thanks, Amsoil. We're going to take another commercial break. Don't forget to keep sharing the show, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, comment Amsoil. When we come back, we're going to have tonight's random share giveaway winner. Jordan, let's take a look at that commercial. Classic and vintage dirt bikes are more than a hobby. It's not just about the ride. It's about the work that goes in. The work that keeps you connected to the ride. It's about bringing the bike back to life. And doing it with your own hands. It's about the adrenaline and adventure. And when it comes to putting all the pieces together, only Vinco knows the bikes and parts the way you do. Vinco, keep the ride going. Thank you, Vinco. Susie was in during the commercial break and she brought me a paper and uh, it's very interesting. She wrote two names on it. She wrote Jeff Kokoski or Glenn Buckles. So here's what I'm gonna do because I'm such a generous guy. Jeff Kokoski and Glenn Buckles, send me your mailing address. I'm gonna get both of you guys something compliments of Amsoil. Jeff Kokoski and Glenn Buckles. Inbox me your mailing address and I'm gonna get you something out, okay? That's who our random share giveaway winner is this week. Two winners this week. This week in motocross history is brought to you, of course, by Racer X Magazine, one of the finest motocross publications on your newsstand now, also available online, Racer X. In 1977, Suzuki's Tony DeStefano won the opening night of the Houston Astrodome race over Honda's Jim Pomeroy, now back in America full-time after racing the FIM Motocross World Championship 250 Grand Prix circuit for almost four years on that Boltaco. And there's a great picture. And I put this picture up. I picked it purposely. I know it's from 1974, but it's a great picture of Tony D and, of course, Jim Pomeroy standing next to him. Uh, to their left and right, Jim Pomeroy, Brad Lackey, the first guys that really got on the podium for America in the motocross donations. So there they are, Tony Stefano, Jim Pomeroy. In 1990, Jeremy McGrath took his first win on a Kawasaki KX125, and that was his first professional win in Las Vegas at a, one, at, at a Supercross. He was topping fellow, Ameri fellow Kawasaki rider Michael Craig and Honda privateer Ty Davis. The Showtime era began in 1990 for Jeremy McGrath. In 1974, Husqvarna's Gary Semix won the 500 class at the Houston Astrodome. And with it, the overall series championship in a three-round AMA Yamaha Super Series Stadium Cross, Stadium, uh, stadium Series of Motocross. History doesn't often show the Ohio-born Semix in the list of AMA Supercross champions as the 500cc class soon fell off as the support class, but he beat some pretty good guys winning that race that night. Tony Stefano, Steve Stackable, Barry Higgins, and the late Tim Hart. Gary Semex, a 500cc Supercross winner, but was before it was called Supercross. It was called the uh, Series of Stadium Motocross. Oh, in the announcements tonight, let's see what we got coming up, Jordan. What do we got first? Oh. This coming Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Vintage Motocross Radio, my guest will be the flying Hawaiian John DeSoto. You often hear the name legend and pioneer of motocross. Johnny was there in the late 60s. We're going to be talking about how he got his start in Hawaii, what he did before he was into motocross. We're going to talk about his career in politics and so many more things. 
Beyond the Snow Dogs, Sunday morning, 11 a.m., Vintage Motocross Radio. I hope you all can make it. VMX Radio can now be heard on all these different podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, all the ones you see here uh, in, this, in this slide. So you can listen anytime you like. You don't have to be on Facebook. You don't have to be on YouTube. You can listen to VMX Radio on a podcast, and we are going to be updating that. We put, uh, I think there was maybe eight or ten of the, of the, uh, the interviews that we've done in the past. We're about ready to start uploading more on there. So check back often and uh, you'll be able to hear some well one of the 40 over 40 interviews that i've done from vintage motocross radio and again just a reminder this sunday john the soda the kickstart classic this is american retro crosses race and this is coming up this weekend march 21st at glen helen on the vet track and there's something special they got going on called the motocross d machines there's four teams that are confirmed. They need, there's three more openings available. So start rounding up your teammates. Now, I don't know the full particulars on this, but I can tell you something to the tune of there's a modern bike involved, there's an Evo bike involved, and there's a vintage bike involved. And it's also broken down by novice, expert, and amateur. And I think if uh, your teammate is on a modern bike and let's say he takes a first place, but you're on a vintage bike and you take a third, the points kind of add up and they get evened out. It's a real, real interesting way to keep the racing even. It's a lot of fun. American Retro Cross, check out their Kickstart Classic. That's this weekend at Glen Helen on the vet track. Burroughs Ranch in Chrome, California, March 20th and 21st, just around the corner. There's a National Vintage Motocross Series there. There's a trial series. They'll also be doing some cross-country races. This is an armor race, so you might want to check that out in Chrome, California. This was canceled last year due to the COVID-19 debacle, and, uh, but it's back on target and it's back on schedule. You might want to get up there. Burroughs Ranch, Chrome, California. This weekend, March 20th, the Pacific Northwest Vintage Motocross Riders at Woodland, Washington. There is a race fee of 30 bucks for members, 40 if you're not a member. There's also a gate fee of 15 bucks. They run all sorts of different classes there. And uh, some of the people who contribute to this show, including Jordan Woodworth, Fritz Gunther, a lot of other people who are up there in the Northwest will be at this race this weekend. So if you get a minute, take a day, get your bike out there, Pacific Northwest Vintage Motocross in Woodland. Vintage Motocross Q&A t-shirts are still available. So are the hooded sweatshirts. They're just $19.99 for the t-shirts, a couple of bucks more for the, uh, for the hoodies. So if you get a minute, follow the link in the show description. You can get over there and get your shirt, either in white or gray, and send in a picture of yourself wearing that shirt. We'll be happy to post it here on Vintage Motocross Q&A. Sponsorship opportunities are still available. You can be on the board behind me, which is going to be getting a little bit bigger in the very, very near future. We want to thank people like Motion Pro, Ams Oil, Northwest Mako CZ, Sunrise Vapor Blasting, Full Circle, Preston Petty, and Vinco. Why not get your name up there? We're hitting over 20,000 people a week, sometimes 100,000 people a month. Where are you going to get that kind of exposure on Facebook just from your own page? It can't be done, but it can be done for a nominal fee to be a sponsor here on Vintage Motocross Q&A. Please inbox me. I'll get you a sponsorship proposal package. You'll be seeing the benefits, same as everybody else here. That is it for tonight's show. I want to thank Jordan Woodworth for producing such a fine show tonight. I want to thank you all the viewers at home, Jeff Kutoski, uh, for winning the Random Share giveaway tonight. All the people that share every week. I don't want to miss anyone's name, but Mark Brown comes up. Uh, Sam Florin, Joe Anderson, so many people share the show and they make that all possible uh, for so many people to view it. So keep up the great work, guys. Don't forget Sunday, John DeSoto. And uh, thank you all for watching Vintage Motocross Q&A. And now I will call in the world's biggest hammy dog, Gino. Gino, come on, boy. Oh, you're getting fat, you big ham.